That's a big question, obviously, and uh, it can be answered at a variety of levels. Let, let me answer it at maybe the, the most broadest level. Uh, is I believe that cognitive development um, must be approached from a, not just a psychological perspective, but also a biological perspective. That developmental biology should be the meta theory, so to speak, for cognitive development. Humans are biological creatures. Uh, it's unquestionable that the brain is the seat of the mind, so to speak. Mind is an instantiation of brain. Mind is like a verb. It's what the brain does. Uh, and so you need an understanding of um, biology, uh, of biological development, to have a proper understanding of cognitive development. Cognition is a biological characteristic of the species, and, and thus its, its development. But Taking a biological perspective implies taking a, a evolutionary perspective. Evolutionary theory is the backbone of modern biological theory. Uh, thus, it's not, it's not just important to have a theory of the brain to have an understanding of the mind, but you have to have a, a theory of how the human brain uh, and the mind evolved. What is it for, so to speak? What, what benefit it, did it do to our ancestors? Thus, taking an evolutionary perspective to cognitive development mainly puts it in the mainstream of modern science, I think. It, it, is, uh, uh, it achieves or tries to achieve what is sometimes called consilience, uh, that psychological theory, in this case cognitive development, is consistent with what we know about the next level, explanatory level down, which in this case is, is, is biology. So uh, that's the answer at one level. Um, at another level, uh, the understanding, uh, taking an evolutionary perspective to cognitive development helps us understand how children's cognition, their thinking, may have been adapted uh, to various stages and times of development. Uh, evolutionary theory it emphasizes uh, natural selection, um, that characteristics of individuals were selected for over the course of evolution. That is, there was a good match between uh, the environment uh, and the individual at a time that increased the likelihood of, of surviving. Uh, this is sort of the cornerstone of evol modern evolutionary theory. Well, most evolutionary accounts, uh, at least in, in psychology, evolutionary psychology, look at the adult. What is it about the adult that is well, well adapted to ancient environments that may have been selected that still characterizes the species today? Uh, a lot of these things dealing with, um, uh, with mating and reproduction or parenting or social relationships among, among adults. And this is quite reasonable and that it's the adults who do the, um, uh, the, the reproduction, the mating and the reproduction and survival. But natural selection surely worked at all stages of development, not just on adulthood. You've got to get through infancy and childhood first before you make it to adolescence and adulthood where, where the reproduction and parenting and getting the next generation out there can begin. So natural selection would have had as potent and maybe even more potent an impact on early stages of development. You first have to be born. So there have to be adaptations associated with the prenatal period, adaptations that get the child, infant, through infancy, a period of extreme dependency uh, that you never could get through alone. And you, there may have been very important cues or characteristics of infants that encouraged uh, attachment, encouraged adult care and attention. Uh, getting through childhood, um, uh, considering what our ancient environments might have been like, what role does play have or might it have had uh, in development of social skills, of uh, tool use skills, other manual uh, technical skills? Uh, how do we learn social relationships early in life that are going to be beneficial to us later on in life? Uh, these, are, these things don't just pop up in adulthood. Uh, with the first blast of pubertal hormones or, uh, or the final blast uh, uh, into uh, full-fledged adults, but, but they, they develop. And taking an evolutionary perspective to cognitive development uh, gives us a little different idea, of um, a little different way of, of looking at how children think, 
why it might have been important to our ancestors and important to, to us today, it may cause us to, it will cause us to see children a little bit differently, to see immaturity a little bit differently. Maybe some aspects of cognition we think are immature, be nice if kids got over them, they may be well suited for a particular niche of childhood or of infancy. And we as adults may not want to push kids through them. Uh, we may not want to accelerate development as, as we are often want to do with our, with our children. Maybe they'll get into Harvard if they can uh, uh, learn French, uh, English, and Latin by the time they're four. Um, maybe, maybe not. So a cognitive perspective, uh, I'm sorry, an evolutionary perspective of cognitive development, um, of development in general helps us see children and their development in a different light. Uh, it helps us get a better understanding, I think, of the process of development, and it can help us uh, in situations where we want to uh, intervene when uh, there's a mismatch between uh, a child's particular developmental level or functioning in an environment now that doesn't uh, uh, bode well for, for future or contemporary uh, psychological adjustment. Okay.